But I think those are pivotal moments. Uh, your injuries that an athlete experiences, especially ones that take a long time to heal and that you have to go through this process of rebuilding your body. Um, and you learn some things along the way. Were there any like aha moments from your, but either one of those experiences where you're like, man, I should maybe do things differently. Definitely, definitely. When it came to the arm, um, the Tommy John was just how specific you got to be in terms of your arm care and, and program and, and follow that Dillinger just to make sure that your arm stays fresh and it's ready to go when you, when you want it to go, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the knee side of it, um, it was not doing a lot of power lifting anymore. I, I, at, in college, we were doing a lot of power cleans and box jumps and stuff, just stuff like that that I think over time kind of put some wear and tear on me. And then after the knee surgery, it was just a lot of different balances on the BOSU balls and just a, cup, just a different variety of that kind of stuff that mm-hmm. um, I think just helped strengthen it up and wish yeah. I would have been doing a lot of stuff that before. Yeah. Do you think that influenced then your next step? Because you went into coaching with at the professional level. Yeah, I had coached at the junior college level for a year and then was a volunteer back at Sacramento State for two years and then got an opportunity to join the Mariners uh, coaching staff. Um, and that happened three years ago. And then from there, I really, really got introduced to body movement and things like that. Uh, TPI, the director of TPI came yeah. down to spring training, gave about an hour performance I believe in 2016 to us. Um, it was kind of introduced to everybody as a mm-hmm. group, as a coaching staff there, and, and it was just kind of like, hey, we're going to kind of dive into this. And that first year, you, you really didn't hear a lot about it. it. Kind of like, okay, we're dabbling in it now. But the following year after that, we really dove into that, and that's when they had on base use yeah. screens. Yeah. Um, and then from that moment on, it was kind of like a big deal. Like, we're going to dive into that. They gave us like a 140 page Google Drive pamphlet oh, yeah. of all the oh, stuff. Yeah. Yep. We read it, and then when our athletes had to get screened, the hitting coaches had to be there to watch mm-hmm. to see if they had any deficiencies in hips or pelvis or T-spine, things like that. So just kind of going through those reps of being with diff- every different athlete and this, you know, guys from all over the world that are different bodies, different movers, mm-hmm. just seeing their screens and kind of going through that process actually made you want to say, hey, what's, what else can I learn and how, how much more of this is out there? Yeah. I think, um, I mean, to provide clarity to those maybe listening, obviously listening and, uh, and watching, TPI, Titleist Performance Institute, created by uh, Greg Gross, who's yes, a chiropractor, yeah. movement specialist. He's uh, teamed up with a lot of uh, other good minds and, and giving resources to the rehab world. Yeah. Um, he created On Base U, which is uh, a similar assessment tool for baseball players is for golfers, which is for TPI. Uh, So the rotational athlete. And the idea of it is, so I've been to the course for hitters and we have team members that have been for pitchers. So we just, you know, consolidate the information. But um, what the the premise is like, how can we look at movement deficiencies in very low hanging fruit areas, very common areas that say a pitcher or hitter would need to get in the best position possible. I think this is, and I think this is where we all choose to to you know dive into our professions or that next transition in, in yeah. your professional career is how can I make an effect on the things that maybe I learned in the process or where I failed and I think for me kind of like you experiencing an injury and and being in a, a certain program that had a certain influence to say like this is the way you do it and then learning after an injury like actually maybe this other way was a better option or at least should have piggybacked off of it exactly. and I think in sport we don't talk enough about we're training the individual to get to a certain position. Yeah, that's 100 percent it. Not just we're assuming that by getting stronger or more powerful with a specific lift, it's going to have some translatory effect to their athletic, um, I don't know, prowess on the field, court, whatever it may yeah. be. So on base, you when I experienced it, kind of like as you're ex- describing it uh, with the Mariners organization, is that it gave you this this interesting tool where you could assess people, say, can you physically move your body? To, to get to a position that you're going to need either in the box or on the mound. Yeah. And that's an interesting conversation then that the rehab specialist could have to the sport coach, 100%. There's no doubt. I mean, it was, it was interesting to see once we started diving into that, that there were some cases where you were trying to do some kind of mechanical fix with a guy, whether it's to lower his hands or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. But then after they get a screen and you, you understand that their left hip doesn't move the, the way you want it to move, mm-hmm. it's going to be an issue that that strength coach is going to have to take on or the therapist is going to have to yeah. take on. So as much as I want to be the hitting coach and say, hey, I, I know it all and I can give you some kind of mechanical fix to do it, it might not happen if that kid is not moving the right way like you should. So that screen is just a great tool to kind of identify some issues that these players might have without having to go in the cage and take a thousand swings yeah. and 
not and not go anywhere. Yeah, and I think that's an impactful thing that you noted there is that there's three people in that conversation. Yes. There's the hitting coach or pitching coach, there's the performance coach or strength coach, and then there's the rehab specialist. Like this trio of minds that never really talked before, never really collaborated together. I mean, sure, professional organizations hire all three of those positions, but I mean, I, I spent a small stint with the Giants, and I can tell you that it wasn't a strong conversation between everyone on the same page. Definitely. So um, the fact that, I mean, you have this screen starting this trend of like, yeah, we need to dialogue. get together to stop banging our heads up against the walls. The hitting coach would be like, can you make this change for me, please? Yeah. And thinking the player doesn't is not motivated to make that change. Exactly. But instead yeah. is like, I just physically can't do it. Yeah. You know? And then what are we doing in the gym? What are we doing on, in the training program that's maybe either facilitating that deficit or what are we not doing that's going to make it better? And then from a rehab standpoint, what are you seeing when you're when they're coming in to see you rather than um, no one talking at all? I think that's like a, a huge shift in in the baseball world, and I'd probably I'd hope other sports as well. But um, I think that's gold there. And yeah. I mean, just hearing like you've said it subtly there, Dave, but like the, the hitting coach being present during the screen, whether it's done by a strength coach or a PT or whatever the other other team members are, but. I know one thing that, that I experienced with some athletes in the, in the time we were working together was to develop their body, like develop their hip rotation, yeah. develop their trunk rotation, develop their, their core stability, foot control, whatever it might be for the athlete. And then the feedback from either the coach or the athlete was that they can now get into positions that they couldn't get into before. And that's what, that's what led to a lot of transition in their, their power production or their success as an athlete and whatever the measurable was for them. And, and that's that's what this is kind of all about is exactly yeah, yeah. it's just I, we, we use with the mariners and they talked a lot about was uh, reading the dials and making sure that everybody's there you know apparent and involved in that you know um you really start to see it over the last couple of years that when and when we were in meetings and we were talking about a certain player like it was okay for the strength coach to say you know what i think he's having some deficiencies here so maybe that's why he can't rotate the way you want to when he hits mm -hmm. and they were free to say that or, or mm -hmm. you know to go ahead what do you think you yeah. know and, and that really started that dialogue of hey how are we all going to figure out how to get this guy better yeah it's not just the hitting coaches <laughs> no right. you know which it's a lot to hang on one person because you know, they don't have control of everything yeah and then, like yeah. you're you have different professionals to to offer their specialty to help this person get the most from from i guess their potential and on that level it's like we want to maximize the money we gave that person yeah and then at the recruiting level like you saw someone in, at their freshman level in high school and you saw something special in them but you know that they're raw and how can you get them from that rawness to like a more refined state and then they and then when they commit to you they're really useful for four years you know definitely